What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're going to talk, you know, we're still in the studio. It's winter time, so we're not on the actual job site. But we're going to talk about some concepts when it comes to digging and bucket angles and why that matters. Why bucket angle is so crucial. So we're going to flip back here. We're going to grab our Cabelco SK500 because I freaking love this thing. It's such a cool die cast model. And we're going to start looking at this area right here. We're going to look at the floor of the bucket. So this is your bucket floor right here. And we're going to look at the angle at which we engage the ground. And we're not actually going to use the die cast for this full thing because it's a little too small and hard to kind of see. So we're going to pretend like this really cheap, cheesy, these are terrible, don't ever buy these things. But this little drywall scraper, we're gonna pretend that that's our bucket floor, okay? So just imagine that that represents the bottom of our bucket. So why is bucket angle important? Well, let's think about engaging the ground. Here's our ground. If we come in with our bucket, and our bucket floor, we're digging towards the machine. So the machine is here, we're coming in with our excavator arm and we're gonna dig. If we come in at a super steep angle, what's that actually gonna do to the dirt? Again, think about this now. Let's just, let's just talk about the concepts behind this spatula here. Let's not even worry about the excavator for a second. If I come in and I push, well, first of all, I already had to set my hand up if you saw. I have to use a lot of force when I'm straight up like this because there's a lot of drag, there's a lot of friction, especially if we start mounting a bunch of dirt in front of this thing, I'm really gonna have to crank to drag this thing across the ground. Well, that creates a lot of extra friction and a lot of extra work and we're not actually doing anything other than scooting dirt around. Because again, let's flip to this being the bucket of our floor again. If we're not scooping anything up into our bucket, then we're just moving dirt around. And that's exactly when you're gonna use a straight up and down bucket configuration in an excavator. If I reach out there and scrape the ground like this, my whole purpose is to move material around. I'm not scooping. This is purely to move stuff around and maybe to scratch just a little bit because as you can see here, the teeth are really, really engaged when you've got that bucket straight up and down. But we're not gonna be doing any real digging. But now let's go back to our spatula. Let's say now we start to curl our bucket in a little bit towards the machine. Well, now what's gonna happen? Well, when I come in here, there's a couple things. First of all, we're gonna start to engage and that's going to lift material into our bucket, which is also at the same time going to try to pull the bucket down a little bit. And so if we come in at this kind of steep angle, still steep angle, we're gonna be pretty aggressive. We're gonna be digging down into the earth a lot and we're gonna get a lot of spoils going up into our bucket. Well, that's great for soft materials, but we've all been in the situation and if you haven't as a new guy, that's okay. You'll get into a situation to where you can come at it all day long with your bucket pretty steep and it's super hard clay. You can't get any traction. How on earth I cannot get a full bucket, what are we gonna do? Well, that's where you really start to adjust this bucket angle. What would happen if we drop this bucket angle down to about here, so not quite as steep, we're coming way down here, and we start to come in? Well, you can already see with the spatula what's gonna happen. We're getting closer and closer to, instead of it being this giant brick wall that we're trying to shove through the dirt, it's starting to act more like a knife or a wedge, and we're able to go in there and we're able to shave a layer off. A lot more dirt is going up into the bucket, but we're not getting so aggressive on our cut. It's not pushing us down into the dirt as much because we've got this nice shallow angle. In fact, this angle looks a lot more like something you'd see on a scraper pan, which if you think about a scraper pan, it's essentially a giant bucket but it's got to load with a really shallow angle because it's trying to minimize friction, which is exactly what we're trying to do in really hard material. All the concepts are connected, it all applies. So we're gonna get that bucket a lot shallower. So if I'm digging in really hard material, I'm not gonna reach out there and keep my bucket at that angle. I'm gonna reach out a little further, so I'm gonna stick out a little bit more, and I'm gonna bring my bucket to right about here when I engage. Notice how shallow that angle is. And then as I start to bring in, as I start to stick in and I start to curl, I'm gonna keep that angle nice and shallow. And that way I'm not getting caught up in all of that clay with all of that friction. I'm able, I'm able to just slide underneath it. That's a great way for dealing with really, really hard material. And yet, 
you're still going to get in situations, believe it or not, where that's not going to be enough. And so now what do we do? Oh, Brian, how, well, how am I ever going to get a full bucket? It's okay. We have to think about what's causing us problems. What's not allowing us to get a full bucket? It's friction, right? That's really what we're getting bogged down is the drag of the dirt on our bucket. That clay is so hard and so sticky. doesn't want to go in our bucket. Well, what if, let's look at it from face on now. What if instead of trying to take this whole wide swath at once, what if we only used half of the bucket? And so we're going to keep our shallow angle and, and it, you're in the machine. Let's imagine you're in the machine. This is our bucket floor coming towards you. And what if our cut starts here and is over? So we start cutting just this quarter of the bucket. Now, is that going to get you a full bucket on one pass? Probably not, but that's okay. Because if I can do this, reach back out and do another pass, and it's taking half of the time or less than half the time of me scraping with a full bucket and only getting a half bucket. If I'm able to get a full loaded heaped bucket by doing two quicker passes using only half to a quarter of my bucket, at the end of the day, that's a net positive, right? We're being more productive because through the course of the day, we're going to be moving more material than we would having to take super slow passes that only result in maybe a half to three quarter full bucket. If I can make two quick passes, I've got a nice heaped bucket because I reduced all that friction. Boom, that's a win. So that's what I wanted to cover for today. That's kind of the basics of why we use different bucket angles and how it impacts the machine and how it can impact your performance when you're digging in some harder, stickier materials. So as always, I hope this helps you guys in your careers. We'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.